let me take you through the mode of action of another one that does not act on the RAS system. It is called nifedipine. It is called amlodipine. These are the drugs which are very obvious again, right? So nifedipine and amlodipine, they are classified under a group of drugs that are called the calcium channel blockers. The point is calcium channel blockers. So look at this diagram here. I hope you can see it. This is a blood vessel. I don't know if people on TikTok can see that. I think that there's a reflection. Anyway, let me just use an illustration of the fingers. So this is a blood vessel, right? And this blood vessel, we have cells here. We said we have smooth muscle cells here. We have the endothelial cells lining this blood vessel. Now, for this blood vessel to constrict or to contract or to actually narrow, it needs calcium. Why? Calcium is the element that causes contraction or constriction of cells. So when calcium gets inside the cell, the cell contracts. That's why calcium is used as a contractive agent in the heart. So the heart muscle needs calcium to contract so that it can pump blood. So this contraction is aided by calcium. Okay. So when calcium gets into the cell, it causes contraction. And now drugs that are called calcium channel blockers from the name, they block calcium from getting into the cells. Now remember this, as somebody who has already been diagnosed with hypertension, there's already calcium in your blood vessel cells. So that's why they are contracting anyway. That's why you're diagnosed with hypertension. But now you're being given a drug that is not going to pump out calcium from the cells. It's going to block more calcium from going into the cells, which is awesome. So when you block calcium from going into these cells, the blood vessel relaxes and it opens up. It becomes flexible and it opens up. Okay? When it opens up, now this means your blood pressure goes down. But again, you've blocked calcium from going into the cells, but you've not pumped out that calcium that was inside the cell. So you're still doing something the same. You're just going to leave symptoms for quite some time. When the liver does away with the nifedipine, you go back to the normal uh, routine. But look at it this way. The first time you're being diagnosed with hypertension and you're put on nifedipine, why don't they tell you to eat pumpkin seeds? Why don't they tell you to eat groundnuts? Why don't they tell you to eat avocados and the seafoods? Because seafoods or the even to go to the worst, they should give you magnesium supplements. Magnesium does not block calcium from going into the cell. But what it does, magnesium gets into these cells and pumps out calcium. So when magnesium gets into these cells, it pumps out calcium. Amazing story of success. When magnesium gets in, it pumps out calcium, the blood vessel relaxes, and the blood pressure goes. How difficult is that? That now they have to tell you to stop eating nuts because they come with fats. They tell you to stop eating avocados because this is fats. And they now give you nifedipine and amlodipine. Why don't we decide that, hey, yes, we can take this amlodipine for quite some time because we are trying to stabilize blood pressures. However, why don't we tell these people to change their diets? Eat foods that are rich in magnesium so that this magnesium gets into the cells and pumps out calcium. And when you pump out calcium, you have regulated blood pressure. This blood vessel relaxes and blood pressure goes down. Number two, magnesium is a very relaxing agent. That's why when you take magnesium supplements, you end up having very good sleep. And those people who have anxiety, they end up stabilizing the anxiety. So the question comes in this way. Why would we give you nifedipine instead of magnesium supplements? Why would we then end up giving you propranolol for your anxiety instead of giving you magnesium? And magnesium supplements, they are good for this. However, magnesium in its natural state is found in avocados, it's found in nuts, it's found in, uh, what else, green bananas, it's found in green leafy vegetables. And the groundnuts or the peanuts or the cashew nuts, why don't you encourage you to do this so that you fix yourself in a natural way? Why is there always a pill for every ill? Why? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. People who have hypertension, please start eating avocados. Do not follow that crazy person who told you that avocados have high calories. Yes, they have high calories, but they are healthy calories. We cannot compare calories in an avocado and calories in a donut. You could easily hear him. He's talking and his nose is clogged. And he's telling you how to avoid being obese by eating no avocados, by not eating avocados. 
So do you see this? So somebody who has had hypertension, sometimes I ask you, what is this disease? You don't even know. But you're taking drugs. So what are you taking drugs for? And then I ask you, please tell me the mode of action of the drugs because the doctor who gave you these drugs should tell you how they are working. No, nobody says it. They don't even know. They don't even care. They say, this, this, this is not ours. Somebody is saying, uh, no, that, uh, Jemima, that's not the name. It's clonidine. Clonidine is an alpha blocker. Clonidine, methyl dopa, these are drugs that block the alpha receptors from the central nervous system. When they block that, they cause dilation of blood vessels. However, they are causing dilation of blood vessels, but they are not fixing the problem. They are not fixing the problem. I have joined late, but it's so sad seeing the kind of uh, info being also fed to diabetics. I am a medical student in third year, and you find these patients being given brown bread and plenty of fruits. Victor! Listen to that. Listen to that. This is a medical student who was already seeing it. And if he did not get information to just help him see it through, he will actually be doing the same thing after graduating. Okay? So yes, I think w when people are waking up, it's going to be very hard for your doctors. It's going to be very hard. Somebody's asking about mode of action of hydralazine. Hydralazine is another one that actually blocks the calcium receptors. The calcium channel, sorry. Okay? Yes. So, take, take some chance, okay? If you have these conditions, take some chance and simply go and Google mode of action of that drug that you're using. Mode of action. You will see how they work. And you will see there's no drug that's going to fix the kitchen. There's no drug that is coming to pull that seed oil out of your kitchen. There's no drug that's going to tell you how to eat healthy. All these drugs are going to help you treat the symptoms of hypertension. And by the way, if you never knew, hypertension is actually a symptom or a warning sign of a bad kitchen. So it warns you against the bad kitchen. It tells you, oh, your kitchen is crazy. They are just symptoms, including stroke. It tells you, hey, you've been eating the wrong thing. What about hydrochlothiazide? That is what you call the HCTZ. Hydrochlothiazide. They are thiazide diuretics. What they do is they help you urinate. And when you urinate more, your blood volume goes down, your blood pressure goes down. But again, they are helping you urinate and then you end up getting dehydration. You end up losing a lot of sodium. That is dehydration. So therefore, again, another problem. <laughs> okay? And that's why I tell you, every single drug comes with side effects, including paracetamol. They come with side effects. But that do not come with side effects. They don't. So now that you're equipped with information about how drugs for, for hypertension work, it's easy for you to know how to fix the causes of hypertension and not focus on the symptoms of hypertension. Is that not amazing? Atolol is a tenolol. A tenolol, any drug that ends with L-O-L. Lols, lols, atenolol, bisoprolol, cavedilol. Those are beta blockers. They are beta blockers, so they block a propranolol. They block the beta receptors. Okay? And, and somebody lied to you that uh, coffee is going to raise your blood pressure. You see, let me tell you the truth, guys. Sugarless black coffee is awesome. As long as you take it after taking a glass or a cup of your warm water that has some salt, then now you can take your glass of cup, uh, your cup of coffee. But most of you blame coffee for problems that are actually brought by the sugar that you add in coffee. Some of you add six spoonfuls of sugar in coffee, and then you are so quick to say, oh, you know, coffee gives me palpitations. I'm like, no. If you're getting palpitations because of taking coffee, simply take a cup of water, add some salt, drink it, then drink your coffee. But the more you add sugar in the coffee, and then you start blaming the coffee, you start blaming coffee for kidney problems. You've seen doctors saying, oh, coffee has caffeine that actually destroys the kidneys. But they are not telling you the truth. They want to soothe you so that you can actually come back. The truth is, the sugar that you're putting in coffee is the crime. You people take, you go to uh, that coffee junction and you take, you, you now tell us, oh, you know, I don't take sugar, but I use honey. Oh, you know, I use stevia. Stevia destroys your adrenal glands. Honey is sugar. Even worse than the table sugar. It's fructose. Sugarless black coffee. Enjoy it. When you're fasting, do it. Doc, you mean you haven't eaten with all this energy? Imagine, Julie. And that is from last, from yesterday at noon. 
<laughs> yeah, the energy does not come from what you put in your stomach. It comes from the fat cells. So at this moment in time, I believe I'm beyond uh, uh, the 30th hour mark. So what I'm just doing right now, I'm burning fat to get ketone bodies that are fixing my system. I'm getting this, what we call autophagy. The cells are cleaning up. The system is cleaning up. My immune system is going up. Somebody is asking me preterax. Preterax, I don't know what preterax is. You see, those are trade names. At least read the trade name and then there's a small name down there. That's the, the generic name. That's what I encourage you to read. When you ask me that generic name, it's easy for me to know than asking me. Like if you tell me what is Panadol, I'll tell you I don't know what Panadol is. But Paracetamol, I know. Because it's universal. So do not use trade names, okay? I'm on autophagy state. This is Nancy Tiff. Yes, all of us who have started fasting and we are now pushing. We are very far. We are very far into the autophagy state. We are now burning fat to get ketone bodies. We are fixing our mitochondria where mutations start. We are fixing the blood vessel, the inflammation in the blood vessels. So our CRP is actually going down. And we are getting better every time we fast. And you will know. It comes to a time when you are going beyond... Uh, when you're going beyond uh, the, the what, uh, what do you call it, the 48 hour mark, your hunger pangs are zero. Okay, they are zero. You don't even feel hungry anymore. What is wrong with stevia? Stevia is highly inflammatory. Stevia destroys your adrenal glands. Stop taking stevia. There's no sugar substitute. There's nothing sugar substitute. Okay. Hello, is avocado oil good for consumption? Yes, it is. Now, do you know avocados, once you cut them, you give them some, some time and it starts to uh, actually go bad. That's the beauty about avocados. They start to go bad so fast. And then, have you ever seen avocado juice in the supermarkets? Have you? Have you come across avocado juice? Hmm? I have not eaten from Tuesday, 6.30 hours. Feeling fantastic until tomorrow evening. Amazing. Amazing. Keep going. We are eating on Friday from noon. Okay? <laughs> yes. I'm on Cavidilol now for months. I tell you this for free, Lillian. Anybody who is on drugs for hypertension, you're busy fixing symptoms. Just fix the kitchen, let your blood pressure stabilize, and then talk to your doctor to start tapering them down. I went to see my sick friend. This is Anne Masharia. I went to see my sick friend in the hospital, and she was told she is diabetic. That is mistake number one. Them trying to make you believe you're diabetic. They have just diagnosed you with diabetes. So why are they making you identify with the disease? That's the reason why we'll fix identities on Friday. Don't ever identify with the disease. But I was shocked. They served her with varieties of fruits and brown rice. The whole system is confused. Schools, hospitals, and nowadays churches are feeding diseases. They are making you slaves. They are feeding diseases. Schools, churches, and hospitals, they are feeding diseases. Perindopril. Perindopril is part of uh, the SCE inhibitors. Amlodipine is part of the calcium channel blockers. Eh, now this is where your doctor is like, ah, 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 ah. and you see this is the beauty about the lives. You simply ask your doctor a question live. Let them answer it there. <laughs> but you see, there are these people, uh, these channels that I see, they shoot health contents. They just see something that is trending. They go and read a little bit about it. They actually use chat GPT and the Google. They read about it and then they come and make content and then they post it as a video. So now when you ask them questions in that section, the comment section, they Google and they answer you. They Google and they answer you. If you want to know if a doctor went to school and understands his craft, let him do these lives. Ask them questions about medications on the lives. And see how your doctor does not even understand how those drugs work. He's busy shooting health content. Well done. But he's not changing any life because he's there for the numbers. So he's just shooting health content and posting. Shooting and posting. Shooting and posting. Health content is very deep. It's very deep because you have to understand what you're preaching. And you know all these people are suffering from a condition. And all of you have a different health condition. All of you are taking different drugs. So if you... Ukitaka kunasa daktari wako. Ask these questions of medications. See how they go blank. They don't know it. And not because they, they were not taught. It's because the system has just brainwashed them to think in a certain direction. 
So thank you so much for taking your time to join this platform and be informed.